special of course but wait what to do yeah i just yeah nah really now but anyway What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. Like I say, you won't regret it. After my last video, everyone's been asking when I'm gonna bring out this uh, repatriation video. So today I'm gonna go through the whole repatriation process and the 10 days that it took to get here, where I am right now, my home Cape Town, South Africa. It was a very eventful trip home to say the least. So definitely stay tuned. It all started on board the Majestic Princess, which was anchored in the Manila Bay of the Philippines. After two failed attempts, the third one, we finally were heading home. Saying goodbye one last final time to my passenger cabin and into the tenders and off we went to shore, getting that one last look at the beautiful Majestic Princess. So it was officially for me 70 days since I last stepped on land. So it was a very exciting moment that I completely forgot about. So once we got to shore, separated into our buses with my repatriation team from the Majestic, gave us a private escort to the airport. It felt like we were being treated like we were criminals when, you know, really actually crucial aren't the spreaders let's just get that out there right now i mean the amount of sanitization that goes on on ships is ridiculous since i joined ships i've been putting just as much alcohol on my hands as i have in my mouth so we were actually the safe ones heading into the disaster zone just fyi but anyway as we got to the airport we realized that our airplane was not there yet i don't know maybe it forgot to pick us up again so there was 161 of us i believe stuck at an empty airport not really any options of proper food waiting with no instructions of when this plane is actually going to really arrive so of course africans being africans you leave us all there what do we end up doing having a beer why not then after about six hours delay i believe it was finally the boeing 767 i think arrived let's just say it looked special i guess but we were all very excited and ready to go home then a little bit longer we waited and finally we we're heading onto the airplane. Little did we know what we were in for. Firstly we walked onto the airplane and there was no air conditioning. I actually felt pretty bad for the stewards because they were in like these hazmat suits the whole time. But then once I got to know them and uh, how friendly they were, I didn't really feel that bad. But yeah, this plane was definitely special. I mean, there was no TVs of course. It had that special material on the chairs that your grandparents had at their homes. That sort of pattern and style. Everything was extremely dirty. Especially, don't even get me started on the bathroom. An absolute joke. I mean, especially during these times, you would think you'd want to, you know, keep those hands clean. But uh, apparently on this plane with so many people, you only need a little tiny bottle of um, soap for all of us. Anyway, one of the funniest parts before we took off was the fact that the captain said we need to maintain social distancing. Really? Really now? And how would you like us to do that? Anyway, it came time to the regular safety drills and all that. Obviously this time we were all paying close, close attention because this plane looked like the last time it was used was the 19 foot sack. So we were very hungry. You know, airplane food isn't always the best. However, this time, <laughs> it still wasn't. Firstly, we got a lovely bag of chips and some water. Thank you, I enjoyed that water. Then we flew, I don't know how long it was, to Malaysia. Stopped off there, dropping off people, picking up people, I'm not quite sure. So anyway, as we took off again, almost about, I think, four hours on the plane now, when finally our delicious, scrumptious meal came. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just took one look at that and I was like, nah, nah, I'm stuffed. So yeah, I just uh, decided to avoid that disaster right there. And to be honest, that was the last time I saw any of the stewards until we landed again. Then finally we got to South Africa, the homeland, very exciting times. Social distancing in place in the airports, of course. We had to go through passport control in case any Africans on this African repatriation flight weren't Africans. A very different experience, seeing the airport completely shut down, grabbing our luggage outside on the tarmac. Then finally, we were in the taxi on our way to the hotel for quarantine. But wait, we had to pull over because we forgot the police. 
for yet again to be escorted straight to the hotel and looked at as criminals, of course. Stopping cars along the way, everyone staring at us, giving us funny looks, what to do. Then finally we arrived at the hotel starving as we still hadn't eaten a proper meal since we left the ship. So I walked into my room, wasn't too bad, but all things considered looking at other people's quarantine facilities, I was uh, expecting worse, so I was pretty happy. First thing I did was order some KFC, as who knew when dinner was gonna come, and thank goodness I ordered KFC. Let's just say the whole quarantine period, the food was special. Definitely, I think special is quite a, quite a good word for this, for this whole repatriation process. And I actually got pretty sick during the quarantine. I have no idea what it could be. I really don't. Could have been anything really, maybe, maybe it was the food. Nah, definitely couldn't have been the food, no, no, no. One of the best parts of the meals was when they sent us a packet of chips with a little note. A little note that said, enjoy the crunch. For these expired chips. Um, I think the crunch left before Corona arrived. But if I had to sum up my quarantine, we'd probably be first day looking out excited to be home, second day feeling motivated, day three starting to find that motivation again, day four trying to keep myself busy, day five feeling sorry for myself, day six who knows, day seven feeling like change, day eight became change. Definitely one of the days that stood out was uh, when we had to do the test, the COVID-19 test. Ugh. Gives me thrills just thinking about it. Not something fun at all. Finally, we did the last stretch home, catching a flight from Johannesburg to Cape Town. Getting to the airport, it was very surreal seeing how empty it was. And obviously in South Africa, they don't believe that you need elevators working at the airport. Clearly doing trips upstairs makes more sense with your luggage. A bit off we were on the plane once again. Everyone wearing masks, buying to the rules. Wait, what? But we were almost there and finally we landed and we were officially home. And yeah, that was my repatriation home and the 10 days that it took to get here. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a little bit of a rant as well. Don't get me wrong, I was very grateful to be taken home, especially by my company, but it was just a, a special. That's what I'm going for today is a special, special trip home. And I hope me, or anyone else never has to go through those kind of experiences ever again. But if you did like this video, hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Got another video coming soon. And I'll check you in the next one.